Hey everybody, it's Frank here. And here is the Yamaha KS1 sequencer. That is our 8 track MIDI sequencer with 80,000 note capacity. And uses 5.25 pulse beats. Like I showed in the last video. Alright. I'll show you a few test menus so we can make sure that this unit works just fine. Um, aside from the faulty disk problems that many of these units will have. Um, it's also helpful to check without having to worry about the disk drive at all. And make sure that all the keys function, the function keyboard works, the encoder works, and so on. Just to make sure that it's a, a healthy unit and it's not, you know, not functioning too bad. Now this uh, test menu is a little different than the QX3. It's kind of an odd combination. It's power on with the keys 135 to 7 up here is the number of keys. We'll press and hold down 135 and 7. 135 and 7 and power it at the same time. And you only hold it down for a second. Okay. So we'll offer us a list of test uh, parameters. They're over one time. And since I know that test number one is the LED and LCD test, that is the one that I want. And I will show you um, how that test will run. It's not going to run on its own. It wants us to wait uh, the first run for those even second. But I'm going to turn the line off so that you can see the LCD and the LED run across. Alright, and I'm going to press run. LCD is flashing off, on and off with darkness, and the LED is here for the tracks that are running. So the green up here is standby in playback mode. The second row of uh, eight tracks, which are in red, are standby and record for edit mode. These, uh, the first set of four uh, LEDs are flying to the first row of keys on this function keyboard, as well as the second row. And then we have our encoder and run LEDs over there at the very right. Alright. So now that it has run its test, I can tell that the uh, highlighter over here is a little bit darker than it should be. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's good to know that it's a little on the dark side. Um, it's important to know that uh, and have it show you if there's a burnt out LED so that you can replace it. Alright. Another thing that's really helpful is since uh, most of the units will not come with an original disk in the driver, one that's already formatted, like this one here. Um, since you obviously can't get past the uh, main menu of the QX1 without a disk in the drive. It's good to know if the keys work. So now that we can bypass the disk drive and test the keys, we can have it tell us that the keys really in fact work. Alright, so test 2 is the character key, uh, which is this whole entire keyboard here. I'm going to press run. Okay. So once you press run, it won't run anything on its own, really. just lets you end the menu. And it wants me to start with the upper left corner, just like the QF3, and end with the, key, the uh, lower right corner of the keys, just like the QF3 will. So I'm just going to run across the first row of keys here. And if it finds anything error-wise, it'll say not found. Alright. So obviously if it finds it, then it'll let you progress on to the next key. And as long as it finds those third keys, and as long as it can read it, and know that you pressed it down, that will let you progress to the next set of keys until you finish all the rows and end up in the inner key here. And then you can start on the second keyboard. Alright, you can also check the encoder as well. So now we know for sure that the LED works like it should. The tracks work as it should, and the keys themselves, function keys here, keyboard works just fine. And now we can actually isolate that problem, and we know for sure that the QS3 or QS1 really does work. And it's extremely important to be able to know this because when you start it up without a disk in the drive, or one that's not working, 
this is all it will do. It'll flash the info uh, LED here. The screen will say welcome to the QF world. And uh, something like set disk or enter disk. But the keys won't make it do anything. So really if you find a unit that doesn't have anything uh, disk wise or if it's got a broken standard disk drive or like I said before uh, does not have a properly formatted disk. Um, you know, you never know that it works. Okay, so that is a very useful test. It's more so useful uh, for the QX one, uh, really. Uh, the five and five point two five floppies are not impossible to find, but they're a little harder to find than the uh, three and a halfs are. So, but you can go on eBay and find them. I found this package here, the recommended. Uh, Brand, I guess you could say. What does Max L? Um, floppy disk here. This one comes in a case. And this from 1982. These were never opened until I bought them and then formatted them for my QX1. Come to the paper. Best to leave them in the paper. This is actually an unopened uh, package of uh, labels. I'll leave that unopened. Alright. And also this package will come with the metallic uh, overwrite uh, sticker so that you can protect the disc from being overwritten. These are double sided, double density, floppy disks. Set that in there. And the case is kind of a, uh, a tinted uh, color so that it's better protected from sunlight and regular um, ultraviolet. Alright, and there it is. There is the floppy disk for the QS1 and the QS1 itself. Thanks for watching and keep sequencing everybody.